Okay, this mini lecture is going to talk about a vector multiplication process that results in another vector. And so when we multiply two vectors together, remember we can either get a scalar quantity out or we can get a vector quantity out. So we're going to briefly describe the process when we get the vector quantity out. And that vector multiplication process is known as the cross product. We are going to discuss that in this mini lecture. When we get a scalar quantity out, that's known as the dot product, and you can check out that mini lecture and example problem in your MCAT series. So first we want to represent, how does this look? How do we represent the cross product visually in an equation? So let's say I have vector A, and I want to multiply, I want to multiply it by vector B, such that my resultant is also a vector. So I want to take the cross product of A and B. I represent the cross product by a small x between vectors a and b. I know that looks like our mathematical multiplication system when we learned scalar multiplication. This is a much smaller x that kind of is centrally located. That's one distinguishing feature. But to try to avoid confusion throughout our study of physics, we won't use that, we'll try not to use that as a representation of scalar multiplication and rather use the other symbols that we have for that. This then equals a vector resultant of vector c. So that vector c has both, of course, magnitude and direction. So we need to not only solve for the magnitude of vector c, but we also have to solve for the direction. To get the magnitude, we're going to take the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b and then we're going to use a relationship of the angle between them. And we're going to use the sine of the angle between vectors a and b. This gives us the magnitude of vector c. That's going to give us the magnitude of vector c. Now, in order to get the direction of vector c, we're going to use what's called the right-hand rule. Sometimes you'll see that abbreviated RHR. Now the right-hand rule, there are three methods that we can use the right-hand rule. So let's use an example of how we get, how we use the right-hand rule. Let's imagine that we have, and we can also use this example for the magnitude. We have a vector A. Let's say that is pointing to the right. And vector B, that is pointing straight up. Now, in order to get the magnitude of the cross product, we would take the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. The sine of the angle between A and B, well, they're 90 degrees from one another. They're orthogonal by 90 degrees. And to get that angle, we'll often put the tail of our two vectors next to each other. So we'll move them so that they're represented on that same Cartesian coordinate system where we would see that A is to the right and B is straight up and there's our 90 degree angle. All right, so we can get the magnitude of C. But what about the direction of C? So here's the right hand rule. Now I want you to be really, you're going to have to really use your brains for these because I am going to be using my right hand, but you're going to see it as my left hand because of the reverse imaging. So follow along with me with your right hand and that will help, hopefully, get us through this weirdness of the reverse imaging of the screen. All right. So one method of the right hand rule, and there's three different ones and I tend to focus on one of them that we will ultimately get to in method number three and we'll use more often as we go through. The first is that we put our thumb in the direction of vector A. So my vector is pointing to the right. My right hand will point to the right. My thumb will point to the right. We put our fingers in direction of B and our palm, which is facing towards me, points in the direction of vector C. It's orthogonal to both A and B. Okay. 
So that's one method. So I want you to try that with your own representation on your paper. So look at your paper, draw your vector A to the right, vector B straight up, put your thumb of your right hand in the direction of vector A. If you're right-handed, you're going to need to put your pencil down. Put your hand, if, put your fingers of that right hand in the direction of vector B. And you should see your palm pointing out of the page. So the palm is pointing in the direction of vector C. So that's one method. Another method is if we take our pointer finger and our index finger and our thumb and we make an L between our pointer finger and our middle finger. I said index, I meant middle. And our thumb is orthogonal to that. Again, with your right hand. If we put our pointer finger in the direction of A, our middle finger points in the direction of B, our thumb will point in the direction of C. So again, in my image, it's towards me. If you put it on your paper, it should be pointing up just like it was in the first method. That's method two. The final method is that we put our fingers in the direction of A. We curl our fingers towards B. So we start with A, we curl our fingers towards B, our thumb then points in the direction of C. So when our thumb points in direction of C, again, that's pointing towards me, just like the other two methods. I tend to use that third method C to find my direction in my right hand rule pointing my fingers in the direction of my initial vector, that's important, so in this case vector A, pointing my fingers in the direction of B, and my thumb will point in the resultant vector. Now the order matters. If instead, if instead I wanted to take the cross product of a B cross A, how does that change my problem? B is then the first step in our right hand rule. So for my method, for my method, B would be that my fingers go in the direction of B. My fingers then curl towards A and my thumb points in the direction of C. And what do we notice? It's opposite the direction we had before. So the direction of C again is orthogonal to both A and B. But if I cross A cross B, the direction of C is opposite than in my B cross A. So which vector comes first matters in a cross product for the direction of our resultant. Not so much for the magnitude of that resultant, but for the direction. All right, we're going to use this a lot when we deal with torques. I'm going to talk about that right hand rule and again we're going to have to use our visual manipulation on our, and use our paper primarily as we're looking at it in terms of um, the reverse imaging of this technology but i'm confident you can handle that and those are a quick example of our cross product good job